So it's a crappy day outside. We're locked down for a coronavirus. What better to make you feel better than um, working on a boat? So today I'm going to work on sanding out this boat. I've put good fill coats on it. It's really pretty smooth at this point, but the surface isn't all that level. We still have the seam tape here, which is a little bit rough. And we, we're trying to smooth that out, get a nice level surface here, um, make it look really sharp. To that end, I'm going to start with 60 grit sandpaper that's going to level things down. I might come through with a rasp and a scraper to get some of the high spots down, but bulk of this work is going to be 60 grit sandpaper. I would like to get a uniformly matte surface over the whole boat. I want to try to do that without grinding into the fiberglass itself. I want to only be sanding away the fill coat and epoxy. Along the seam tape, I will be feathering in the edges of that. So I will get into the uh, fiberglass along the edges of the seam tape, around the edges of the combing where the um, fiberglass that I use to wrap onto the combing exists, and around the stern and bow stem areas where there's extra glass there too. I want to smooth that out, feather that in, make a smooth transition from the one layer of glass to the multiple layer of glass. So that's what today is going to be. It's very zen. It's just working systematically over the whole boat, being very cognizant of what I am trying to accomplish. I'm trying to make a level surface. So I'm going to be consistent on how I approach the whole thing and I'm going to work systematically from one end of the boat to the other and flip it over and one end of the boat to the other. It's not something where you're going and trying to attack wildfires. It's we're trying to level the whole boat, get it nice and uniform. So we're going to work on it in a uniform manner. So let's get to it.
So I think after uh, telling you what I was going to do at the start of this video, I immediately and unceremoniously went off and did something else. Um, I used a long board to do this initial sanding as opposed to a random orbital sander. I don't know if I said what I was going to start sanding with, but started with 60 grit on the long board. And really that's to take down the major high spots. Um, and in the best of all possible worlds to get the best finish, I would use that long board to make it uniformly sanded down to the point where there's no shiny spots left. Um, but I just don't have the energy for that. Um, so I felt I'd knock the high spots down, then come back with the random orbital power sander and get it uniformly scratched up with that. Um, the reason the long board is better is it bridges a longer distance. The long board is um, 14 inches long or so. And so it's bridging a bunch of different things as I'm sanding and just knocking down the highest bits. This has a little bit of cushion so it conforms a little bit, but really it's just going ahead and knocking down those high spots. So things like drips and drools and sags, it's knocking those down first. Um, but there's also sort of a consistent um, waviness to the surface that may well be caused by um, the sanding of the strips before we even put glass on it. Um, this whole boat was built in a week with a uh, team of like six people working on it. Um, and the time between finishing the stripping and putting the fiberglass on it was a couple hours. So we sanded this out and fared it out very quickly. Um, and it, you know, did a very nice job, but it's not necessarily as nice as we might have had, had we had like a day and a half to really refine that fairing out and get a really good surface. And at this point, to try and make the surface perfectly fair with no little ripples in it where when I hit it with a sander I get uniform scratching over the whole thing. That would require I make this part here where it's dull get down to this part here where it's shiny. Um, and that's removing quite a bit of material on either, either side of that shiny spot. And I very well may get down to the glass in this spot before I get this spot shiny. And there's no point in doing that um, because now I'm saying I'd be sanding into the glass and weakening the boat as I do that. So I'm not going to worry about getting this as fair as I might um, if I had had more time to get it really well fared out before even putting the glass on it. So right now I, I need to live with how well I did the, the fairing or how well the class did the fairing before um, we even put the glass on. So with that said, I've knocked down the, the highest spots, started to even out some of these places where um, this is where we have the double layer of fill coat over the seam tape. And so you can see an edge here where that fill coat's built up a little bit. Um, and we've knocked most of that down. In some places I can still feel a little bit of a lip there. Other places that's gone away. Um, here we have two layers of extra glass on the keel line just as armor for when we land on the beach and drag it down the beach. And that, um, this isn't really strength for the boat. The boat's strong enough without it. It's just an abrasion layer. And I'm not that worried about whether I sand into that glass just so long as I leave a good thick layer right along the keel line where it's going to get the most uh, abrasion from dragging it up the beach or running into the beach. So we're working on getting that sanded down. And at this point, I'm now going to take my random orbital sander. It's going to be in the aggressive mode. I'm still with 60 grit sandpaper. 
and I'm going to go over the whole surface, basically working my one foot sections between uh, staple holes. I'll be breaking those one foot sections down and sanding those, working over the whole thing, back and forth, up and down, then move on, on to the next section, back and forth, up and down, and moving on. So that's where we're going to get into. Um, Where's my PPE? We're all into PPE these days. If you didn't know what PPE, if you didn't know what PPE was before now with the coronavirus, everybody knows what PPE is. Now I just need to find where I put it. Here's where I put it. So between the dust collection on the sander and the uh, filters on my mask, I should be pretty well protected from this dust. So I'll just get right to it. So I've got one side of the bottom sanded out with 60 grit. Um, now I'll start working on the other side. Before I do that, I'm going to swap out my sanding disc. This is what the used sanding disc looks like. This is what a new sanding disc looks like. I know a lot of people would say this disc, this used one, has a lot of life left in it. And it does. Um, but as far as getting a good job in fairing the boat and leveling it out, this is starting to get dull, and the duller it gets, the more you have to push on the sander in order to make it cut, the less it's doing fairing, and the more it's digging into the surface. So I want to get a nice leveled surface, so I want as sharp a disc as possible to make that happen. So I'm swapping this out. I'll keep this, and I've got a little hand sanding block that I can stick this Velcro stuff to. So that'll take care of that. While I'm talking here, I'm also going to show you what the dust collection on this Festool sander looks like. This is the sander I'm using. It's the RO125 FEQ. Um, it's their Rotex sanders. Um, and my understanding of how the dust collection works is it pumps a little bit of air out of this center hole center hole there and sucks air in on all these other holes. So that center hole source of air pushes the dust out towards the perimeter where it gets collected by the um, outer holes. So again, when you put the disc on, you want to line up those holes so that dust collection works. So I'm going to aim down here to the surface of the boat and show you with dust collection and without. So here's with dust collection. And now I'm just going to 
unplug the vacuum on here so the vacuum will still turn on it's just not sucking and <laughs> That's probably more dramatic than it was with the hand sander, um, but you see the tool collects a lot of that dust and uh, that's a big safety issue. This dust is probably the most dangerous thing in the shop. So that's the first pass uh, with the 60 grit um, on the random orbital sander. And I'm liking where we're at right now. I've got a pretty uniform scratch over the whole surface. There are a few places where it's a little light um, on the sanding, so they, those will show up as dark spots in the video. They may be a little bit hard to see here. Here's an obvious place right along the keel line where I have not sanded out as much, and so that's still shiny. Um, but most of these places, if I run my hand over them, I really can't feel much there. There might be a slight dimple, um, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling this is a good place to be. I still have to do a lot of sanding to get rid of the scratches from the 60 grit. So I'm gonna be going through 80, 100, 120, um, and maybe up to 220 eventually. And as a consequence, I want to leave some thickness here to sand away at. And if, you know, if I have some, some shiny spots that aren't too far down, um, that just means when I uh, do the finer grit sandpapers that they have some room to uh, cut into here without hitting the weave. Um, so I'm not too worried about those shiny spots remaining by the time I'm done with all the sanding. So at this point, I'm just going to flip it over hit the deck with 60 grit. I will swap out the disc on here again. Um, call that one toast and get a brand new one. I'll take this spot as an example of several things about sanding. I've got some shiny spots left here. These are where the staple holes were. 
This is where the edge of the second fill coat from the bottom, I had masking tape right along there. So I've got a little bit of a step right there in the thickness of the epoxy. Here, I've started to sand into the glass. We can start to see the texture of the fabric right there, as well as up here. A little bit harder to see up here in the camera, but um, there's a perimeter right here where this is no texture. There's a little bit of uh, weave texture up in here and then sort of just scratch surface again. So up in here, similarly along in here, you can see weave texture right in there, scratch surface right here, scratch surface right there. And this weave texture sort of disappears into a scratch surface. So I sanded it all the way through the glass there. Here, here you can sort of see where the edge of the glass is. There's the natural edge of the glass. Here I sand, sand it away there. That's okay. This is the glass going up onto the combing and I'm feathering that edge down to level it out with the rest of the cloth. Um, here, this is not ideal. Um, I really don't want to sand into this part of the cloth because that is the reinforcing of the strips in this area. The seam tape is down here. The uh, cloth to the combing is up here. So this is the real deal cloth right there holding the whole boat together. Now, I'm not actually going to worry about this too much. I don't want to make a big area like that. I can still see fabric in there. Um, I haven't sanded all the way through it like I have up here. Um, so there's still glass reinforcing it here. It's now obviously weaker than it was before I sanded into it, but it's a small area. You know, I can cover it all with one finger. So unless I have some sort of accident with the boat where it gets hit right there, the fact that there's a little bit of cloth missing from that is not the end of the world. If I found that I was starting to hit lots of places over the whole boat here, um, hitting that glass, I'd say, okay, I need to stop. I need to put another fill coat on the whole thing and bury that deep enough under the fill coat that I can sand everything smooth, get rid of all the shiny spots without sanding into that glass and weakening it. But I don't feel I'm at that point yet. There's a couple places around the boat where I've hit it. None of them are bigger than that. So I'm just going to let it be. All right, I've cut everything with 60 grit to where I find satisfactory. Now I'm going to switch to 80 grit. I'm going to switch to the finer mode on my sander. And really what I'm trying to do now is get rid of the scratches from the 60 grit. So I'm going to progressively move to finer sandpaper and progressively move to a more um, finer sanding function on my power sander. So I was in the aggressive, which basically the, the coarser is all gear driven. In the finer mode, the uh, sanding disc is a little bit able to freewheel, um, so it doesn't have as long strokes. It'll do a little bit of a finer job and work on um, creating smaller scratches. So have at it.
stop and talk a little bit about what we're doing here. Over here, everything's been sanded with 60 grit. Over here, it's been sanded to 80 grit. A couple things you can see. Um, these white patches here, what do you think those are? So when I got the boat home from the class, it had a fill coat on it. And in the last episode or episode before, whenever it was, I put another fill coat on it. So what we're looking at here is this here, which is a little whiter, is the original fill coat that we put on during the class. This area around here, which is slightly darker, is the fill coat that I applied. So the, the whiter is a little bit harder because it's been curing for six months and the new stuff is a little bit softer because it's only been a week. And as I'm sanding, I've sanded through this original, through the second fill coat down to the original fill coat. And if we look closer here, over here, we can see these long scratches. That's the 60 grit sandpaper. I had it, the sander in the aggressive mode, so I was getting, with the geared head, it spins the whole head under power, and so you get these long sweeping scratches. Over here, you see a bunch of finer scratches, smaller circles. That's the 80 grit. And what I'm trying to do with the 80 grit is get rid of all evidence of these long sweeping scratches. Once I've gotten rid of those scratches, then I know the deepest scratch over here will be at the 80 grit level. So there shouldn't be anything left that's going deeper into the surface. So what that means is when I go hit it the next time with the 100 grit, I'm going to be trying to get rid of these swirls here. And when I do that, I shouldn't be left with any of the deeper 60 grit scratches left over. That's the theory. It doesn't always work out that way, but um, that's what I'm trying to accomplish now with the, the sanding. So this original 60 grit was to level everything off now all the work I'm going to be doing is to just get rid of the damage I did with the 60 grit. Basically get rid of those scratches. So that's the task I have before me. again with 100 grit. So again, we're trying to get rid of the 80 grit scratches with the 100 grit. I'm now going to put this uh, contour pad back on the sander and that'll take some of the energy out of the, the sanding disc and uh, help it conform to the shape of the boat a little bit more. But so this, but this will make a little bit finer finish on it. Not only finer scratches, but um, the scratches won't be as deep as they might normally be with uh, 100 grit. Uh, you'll notice the different color in these sanding discs. That just happens to be these are granite discs from Festool. This is um, Reuben disc from Festool. This is technically a wood disc. Um, I just don't have any of the granite which are better for the epoxy, etc. But it'll do the job. So back over the whole thing.
these contour pads, when you go to take the disc off, hold the pad down. If you just rip it off, you'll rip the um, Velcro right off the foam. You want to hold the edge down so you don't rip this bit off. <laughs> So that's it for this episode. Um, I've sanded it all to 100 grit. Um, there's still some places with some shiny spots, some of these uh, staple holes um, are still a little bit low. Um, we'll see about filling those in possibly. Um, but I think I'll call it a day for today. I still need to say into 120 and I think I'd go straight to 220. It doesn't look like I'll need any more real fill coats. Um, so I'll do 120 and then 220. But um, I think before I do that, I need to do some work on the, the interior and you know, I'll be flipping the boat around. There's no point in me getting a really fine finish on it right now because I might end up scratching it a bit. So. Um, I think in the next episode, my plan will be to look and doing some of the interior work. Um, I need to mount a rail in there for the seat mounting. Um, I need to make the seat, and I think that's what I'll work on next. Um, so I'm going to leave it right here at 100 grit sanding. Um, this, you will notice that there's some shiny spots along the keel and along these feature lines that I'll do hand sanding with when I get to the uh, finer grits. I avoid sanding that with the power sander because I can burn right through almost immediately. Obviously I need to sand out the combing here. Um, I'll work on that as I work on the interior. So, but we're making good progress and I think it's going to look nice. So if you're enjoying these videos and getting good information, um, please think about subscribing, hit notifications to learn when I'm going to release my next video. And um, if you want to support what I'm doing here, there's always my Patreon site. Also, I sell plans for people to build their own boats. So plans for this boat, the micro bootlegger, is available on my website, guillemotkayaks.com. Also, I um, do try to put the tools that I'm using down in the description. So that's generally an Amazon associates thing. So if you um, buy through one of those links, I might get a kickback and I appreciate your watching. Hit thumbs up if you enjoyed this and uh, talk to you next episode. So stay safe, wash your hands and happy paddling. Take care. Get it? Oh boy!